In this video with the On King, I'm gonna explain how to honor your surgery rotation, and this includes how to use Anki for the shelf exam, which was something I did. Now, here's a little outline for you of exactly what I'm gonna go over in this video. First, I'm gonna go over week to week exactly what I studied. I wrote down everything I did every day, how many hours I worked, everything, just so that I could make this video to help all of you. Next thing I'll do is, is explain the things I would have done the same, things I did that I felt worked really well, and then the things I would have done differently uh, based off of my experience. Then I'll go over some general rotation tips, things that I felt were helpful that I learned from other people or learned while I was there, and then kind of some biohacks, things that I felt like were really good uh, that helped you kind of stay awake, stay on your feet, and feel good. Now, like I said, I used Anki, and we just created this Anki Mastery course for those of you that are a little newer to Anki. And what's included in this is basically it's going to teach you everything you need to know about Anki, and it has an add-on that will install all the add-ons that you need, and it will install all the recommended settings and everything. Now, if you're not using this because you're an uh, experienced user already, you can share this with your friends because the proceeds from this Mastery course are going towards making the Step 2 deck significantly better. Now, first I want to go over my seven-week plan, essentially. So I actually had a six-week rotation, but week one was our intro to rotations, and so I used that as a time to get a lot of the Anki cards out of the way from the Anking Overhaul deck, which is mostly the Dorian deck and the Zonki deck for step two. Uh, and then weeks two through four, I was on a head and neck rotation. Because of coronavirus, this was actually quite a bit lighter load than typically would be. And then weeks five through seven, I was on a pediatric surgery rotation, and which is trauma. And because it was summertime and coronavirus, everyone's outside, this was actually incredibly busy. Now I'm actually going to go show you my calendar of what I did, and we can kind of go over how I used Anki for this. First thing I'm going to show you here is uh, Anki. I'll go through how I used this, how I used the deck. Um, this is an add-on I actually found just a couple of days ago, so I didn't actually use it on the rotation, but it's super cool. You can tell yourself and just remind yourself how far out you are. Um, let's see. It's this one called a Countdown to Events Exam, so just kind of fun. Uh, anyway, if you want to play with that, I'm going to show you how I organized this so that I could do the cards effectively. So I went, here's the Step 2 tag, and I went under Shelf and then surgery, and then I did the no dupes. Um, this means that everything that's a potential duplicate, I just filtered out. I didn't even think about it right from the get-go. I, I, I never looked at them to this day. So uh, I assume that you really don't need them. Now, the other thing I'm going to open up here is the decks and the flags. I'm going to show you how I made a filtered deck. If you have not watched our video on filtered decks, you should definitely watch that um, because that's how I use this for this step two deck. And ideally, you really need to be doing that. So I'm going to click on the no dupes here, uh, which is going to pull up. You can see about 1,800 cards. And what I did to make my filtered deck is I got rid of all of the step one cards. So I'm going to hold command and option on a Mac, or that would be control alt on a Windows. So I'm going to hold those two down and get rid of the LOL Not A Cop, Zonky Farm, and Zonky Step decks. Those are all the Step 1 cards, uh, which I'd already done because I'd been using this deck. So now you can say I'm at 1500 cards. And then what I did is same thing, I'm holding down those two buttons and I got rid of the red flag. And then I only held down Command or Control if you're on a Windows and clicked Suspended so that it's only showing cards that are suspended. And you can make this into a filtered deck. For now, I'm just going to go save this as surgery cards. So now I have a little filter here. And I did that as well. Now the reason I did that is I could see every day, you know, I have 1500 cards that I need to do. And I would click through and say like, okay, here's 29 cards and say that's however many I wanted to do today. I would just flag it um, real quick so that I could see how many I needed to do. And then I would unflag it when I got down there. But my red flag, you can see I got rid of flag one. Um, this one here, yeah, is essentially going to get that card out. So if I'm like, this is super easy, um, I don't need to worry about this card, which you should do, definitely. If you're like, this is easy, don't do that card. You, you've got to minimize what you're doing on this rotation. So I would either flag it or I would unsuspend. So I'd go through and do that really quick. And now you'll see that these three cards here are going to go into my queue and these three red ones are going to disappear out of this filter when I go up here and click enter. And now you'll see that I have three here. So it's just a quick and easy way for me. Then I could click on this filter and see, oh, I have 1,530 cards. Super easy to get that done. So that's kind of the gist of what I did for Anki. Um, suspend liberally, hit the easy button a lot more often. You want to minimize your card load. 
Now here's a calendar. I kept track of literally everything I did every day just so that I can make this video for you guys. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, and I wanted you to know exactly, you know, what is life like on a surgery rotation? Keep in mind, mine's probably going to be different than yours, but at least give you an idea. So this first week here, this is, you can tell I was adding a lot of cards. This was our introduction to rotations. So we weren't really doing anything. We had a couple Zoom meetings. That was it. So I was doing flashcards, as many as I could, from that filter that I just showed you. And then this was our orientation day, and this is when I started. So these three weeks here, this is when I was on head and neck. And you can see I had a day off here. This was a, a holiday. And then I had the weekends off. So it was quite a bit easier rotation, a little lighter on the hours. Here you can see six hours, seven hours, and seven hours. Those were the days when I was on, in clinic. We had one clinic per, day, uh, per week. And then here's my three weeks on pediatric trauma. And this last week was my clinic, which was actually really nice. Gave me some time to prepare for the shelf. Uh, but you can see I was working on Saturdays. It was quite a bit busier. I had longer hours. So um, you can kind of you know pause the video here if you want to look through exactly what I was doing. You can see for the most part I wasn't doing a ton every day. I was adding a little bit of cards. I was reading D. Virgilio um, at the beginning. That's kind of that's where I say you know two chapters here. And then towards the end, I started doing a lot of practice questions. So 20 questions, 20 questions. Here's I'm doing 40 questions. If I had free time on the weekends, notice I did a lot of questions if possible. You just got to take advantage of every free second that you have. Uh, and then towards the end, I did. So I finished AMBOSS this week. I did an NBME. And then I did the D. Virgilio questions. It's in the back of that textbook, which they're very high yield. Uh, and then this last week, you can see I did NBMEs to prepare for that and um this day we actually got off to prepare for our shelf exam and then I took the shelf and the OSCE this day. So that's kind of the plan and now I'm going to go into what I felt like I did well, what I felt like I'd do differently and all that. All right, so things that I would do the same. The first thing I would do the same is the NBME practice exams. All of them, all four of them absolutely must do because I felt like this was extremely helpful. Uh, the the shelf exam felt just like these NBMEs. And I'll be honest, the shelf exam was hard, really hard. I would have rather taken step one again before I did this. And maybe it's just because this was my first rotation. And I used the AMBOSS practice questions and the D. Virgilio questions. This is the, the D. Virgilio textbook. Uh, and I felt like the questions in that textbook were actually really on point and the AMBOSS questions were good. And I had a few classmates that used UWorld and felt like it was not nearly as good for the surgery exam. So I would recommend AMBOSS and the D. Virgilio questions. This textbook's also awesome if you just really like to read. It's written well and it has basically everything you need to know for the surgery shelf. Okay, next is show up and work hard. And this, I can't overemphasize how important this is because this could make or break your grade ultimately. And you really want to know your patients and your procedures. And I'll go over that in a little bit. But basically, our school is graded on a pass, high pass honor system. And it's not uncommon for people to pass the OSCE, pass the uh, shelf exam, and then honor the rotation because they honored their evaluations. So that's a very really key part. And of course, your school may be different. Uh, you know, keep that in mind as you're planning out things. But Showing up working hard is how you're actually going to learn the most as well, which is why you're there. You want to be a good doctor. Now, Anki specifically, the things I would do the same is use the easy button more often, like significantly more often than I was for step one. If I felt like it was easy, I was sending it way out because I didn't have time to do a lot of flashcards. So use that often and then liberally suspend cards. If I felt like those cards were uh, like I was like, okay, I got this down pat. I'm still going to remember it in two weeks from now. Keep in mind, this is only a six week rotation. I was suspending, uh, especially if I felt like I'd know it long term. And the step two deck is just not as good as the step one deck. There's a ton of duplicates, a ton of things. If you feel like there's a card that really overlaps with the concept you already know, either from studying for step one or, you know, from another flashcard, whatever, suspend that flashcard, like get rid of it as fast as you can. All right, things that I would do differently. Uh, we'll start with Anki this time. The things I would do, firstly, is far more focused reviews. I came home every night and I was super tired. And I just kind of like went through those flashcards really fast. I would not have done that again. I would have, A, tried to get them done in the morning if I had free time. Or B, just like take little 10-minute bathroom breaks throughout the day or whatever. In between surgeries, go and do like a focused 20 cards and really test myself on that material. I did not do it a very good job with that compared to what I did with step one. And I think that affected my studies quite a bit. 
Uh, the other thing I would have done is I probably would have made a lot of my own cards. With step one, if I missed a car, uh, qu practice question and there was a flashcard on it, I would just restart that card. I don't feel like that worked well for the shelf exam, and I think it might be because the cards are not as high of a quality. Regardless, I would have made my own flashcards for the missed questions and reviewed those questions better, so that's what I would recommend. Another thing is I probably would have watched the OME videos, online med ed, or maybe read the D. Virgilio textbook a little more because learning everything from the flashcards, it was a little bit fragmented. And then same thing with, with the practice questions. It's kind of fragmented. And so I would actually recommend doing something to get a big picture, especially on those topics that you're a little weak on. And the other thing I would have done is completely ignore all required reading that we were supposed to have for our uh, – you know clinical thing they had like this canvas course for us and we were supposed to do x y and z every week and i did it for the first three weeks and then realized it was a huge waste of time and just moved on like get a plan for the shelf and then focus on your patients and stuff and that's all you should be doing like forget about everything else all right so general rotation tips First tip I would give you is learn how to suture before you start the rotation. On day one, I kid you not, we were doing a big surgery. They had actually taken the fibula out to graft it into someone's mandible. And so there was an incision, you know, like a foot long. And they let me go in and suture that entire thing because I knew what I was doing. And of course, they helped me and I was not perfect by any means. But I knew how to tie the basic knots. I knew how to do a deep dermal, deep dermal suture. I knew how to do a, a running uh, epidermal suture. And I had the subcuticular suture down. So learn those basics. I watched a couple videos by Dr. Buck Parker on YouTube. He's got some good ones. Whatever you do, learn how to do it. Uh, here's a kit that you could learn how to do it with. I'll put a link in the description for this. It's on Amazon uh, so you can use. I would recommend getting something cheap like this and learn how to suture. Next thing is look up the procedures the night before. If you're going to take out uh, an appendix, Learn how that works and what they're going to do during the procedure. Just go watch a YouTube video or something. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but be familiar with it the night before. And then the day of, look up the anatomy and the patient right before. And the reason I say this is there were a couple of days where I looked up all of my patients and the surgeries and everything that was going on early in the morning. And then like four or five hours later, when you're actually in the OR, I had totally blanked when the surgeon asked me about the patient. And so that wasn't good. So I just started looking quick five minute review right before you go into the OR, just so that you're familiar with the patient, their history, why they're there for the surgery. And then look up the anatomy real quick because their surgeons love to ask you about anatomy. That's what they're going to ask you about. And the next thing I learned, uh, this was a tip from an attending actually, is on your rotations, you should go ask the attendings you're working with and say, what do you expect of me to honor this rotation? Now, the reason being, they give you lists, X, Y, and Z is what you need to do. If you go and do X, Y, and Z, then they are kind of obligated to give you a good evaluation. So I felt like that was really good advice and wanted to pass that on to you. Now, lastly is biohacks because surgery is a pretty intense physically uh, rotation so you, you're gonna need some endurance you're gonna be tired uh, first thing I would recommend is compression socks I just was dumb and did not listen to everyone's advice literally everyone tells you to do this and I didn't do it for like four weeks and then I got them and realized it's amazing these are the pair I bought on Amazon they're super cheap again I'll put the description or the link to this in the description um, I felt like these were worth it just go just go get them <laughs> Next thing is liquid IV. So Forrest on our team actually recommended this to me. This is what it looks like. You can buy it at Costco. I'll put a link to it for the on Amazon if you want to get it. Supposedly it helps you stay hydrated better without having to drink as much water. I'm not sure the science behind that, but I felt like it worked really well uh, in terms of I only drank like one big water bottle of this every day, and that was all I had to drink. I wasn't getting headaches or feeling dehydrated, even though it was working 14, 15 hour days, and I didn't have to go to the bathroom all the time, which is nice when you're standing in an eight hour surgery. So that's something to think about. Next thing is a foldable clipboard. I felt like this was really good. Uh, this is one I bought on, well, I found on Amazon. And, uh, you know, it's just great. There, there's little stickers on the back that has little reference values or for you, whatever. It's just nice to have a little clipboard you can stick in your white coat as you're walking around and have all your notes on all your patients. The uh, next thing is a wake-up light. I actually felt like this was super helpful. I know this is kind of unique. You may not have heard other people say this. Um, this is one, again, link in the description for this. But it basically, at whatever time you set your alarm for, it kind of slowly turns the light on. So it feels like you're waking up to the sun. When you have to get up at 4, 4.30 a.m., it's kind of nice. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. 
Lastly is to-go lunches. I went to Costco and just bought a bunch of like little packaged things so that in the morning when I was really tired, I could just grab multiple different things, throw them in a bag, and I was done and ready to go every day for lunch. And I felt like that was really helpful. It allowed me to snack throughout the day. I had little things, and I didn't have to spend a time, a lot of time, getting my meals ready. So that's kind of my biohack suggestions. Um, otherwise, good luck on your surgery rotation. It's a ton of fun, and you will learn a lot. Um, that's the fun of it. So just work hard, and you'll do great. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here, as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at OnKingMed. Also, feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, ongingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.